Okay, so now we're really cooking. We've got the drum kit set, we've got the groove set, we've got our song laid out. Now we can jump into the mixer panel and start really processing this audio to get exactly what we want. And again, here is where we can start going into 5.1, 7.1, and 11.1 surround sound, or we can just keep it stereo. That's perfectly fine too. Using the mixer gives us great flexibility on what we can accomplish. Plus, we're gonna check out some of those 35 unique and exclusive effects to Superior Drummer 3. So I'm excited to do it. Let's get in and get started. All right, so here we are inside of the mixer panel and there's a lot going on here and I actually have a consolidated version on display. By consolidated, I mean I'm only showing the actual channel strips that I'm using for this particular project. It's really easy to add and take away channel strips by clicking the edit visibility button. As you can see here, we have quite a lot going on, but for example, the outputs 3 through 32 are actually for the 11.1 .1 stereo surround sound, and I'm not using that, I'm just using a regular stereo output, so I don't need those. In, in this case, I would just have to click the hide button. So obviously these buttons with the blue around the hide here are the ones that are hidden from the track. I've got more than a few buses that are open if I want them. We get 16 total buses here. Most of these tracks right here, like the ambient sneer microphone, the ambience ribbon microphone, these aren't being used in this particular project, but they're there if we need them and want them. And it's just good to know about that. So we're just gonna go ahead and click the edit visibility button again. So we have the consolidated view here. And I think the best way to go through this panel is just to go from top to bottom over here and kind of discuss each one of the sections of each of the channel strips. Though there are some more advanced options like microphone routing, especially when you're importing your own sounds. And I think that's gonna be for a future tutorial. Here at the top, we've got bleed enabled. And what the bleed is, is each of these samples was recorded in pristine conditions by itself, but there's also the ability to kind of let bleed in from the other instruments inside of the drum kit. So if we're talking about the kick, you know, when you mic a kick drum and you're gonna be playing a full set with your drums, you're inevitably gonna have some bleed, which is just a term for the sounds of the snares and the cymbals getting into that kick microphone. And what's really cool about Superior Drummer 3 is you can actually just completely turn off that bleed if you wanted to, or if you're looking for a more realistic sounding recording or bounce, you can turn on bleeding, and it's actually quite easy to do. As you can see here, I've got the kick selected, and over here on the right side of the screen, I have bleed from instrument. So I can actually turn these on, and you might notice as I'm turning them on, the amount of memory dedicated to the RAM is actually increasing and that has to do with how many samples are being loaded into RAM and you'll notice their number here at the top of the channel strip has gone from 0 to 7 to 6 to 7 and that's because I've turned on six of the bleed channels there's one more here at the bottom I can turn that on too and now I'm at 7 of 7 and what's really cool is we can actually adjust the bleed amount from each of these different drums so if I wanted the hi-hats to be a little bit quieter than the rack toms and maybe the cymbals to be a little bit quieter as well and the ride I want it to like turn way down for whatever reason and the snare to have a little bit beefier because it's right next to the kick drum however you want to use it you have the ability right there so essentially you've got a mixer inside of a mixer and of course if we wanted to turn everything down at the same time we have the bleed level knob right here we can also mute everything really quickly in terms of bleed really simply by just clicking the mute button right there. The effects, we have a number of effects inserts here and we have all of those 35 unique and exclusive effects dedicated to Superior Drummer 3. So if you're using this inside of your DAW, you have all of these great effects right inside of the plugin. You never have to bounce back and forth between your DAW and Superior Drummer 3. You've got them all loaded up right here. We've got a number of EQ units, dynamics, so compression, distortion, six completely different reverbs. We've got plate, room, spring reverbs. The spring reverb sounds pristine. Uh, a couple of delay units, and then some modulations like phaser, tremolo, Ottawa, vibrato, and flangers. It's really easy to add anything to one of the tracks. You just gotta do it. It's kinda similar to a Logic workflow. It's a little bit different than, say, Ableton Live, but it's pretty easy to get a hold of even if you're not used to it. 
Another thing too is the pop-up window is the same. So if I wanted to pop it out, now it's its own window and I can move it to a second screen if I wanted to, or I can leave it right here where it's never gonna go outside of this particular screen. Next up we have bus sends, which is a good way to send a number of different drums to one particular effect. And to do that, we just have to add a new bus. So here I'm gonna come down here and click bus seven. And you can see that my mixer has actually updated to a bus seven and I could come in and maybe rename it effects one or something or reverb or whatever I'm gonna add it. And then I can add those effects here. So if it's a reverb, we get the spring reverb. And now that we have that bus set up, we can actually send as many of these different drum mics to that bus to add that reverb to it. And using sends and returns like that is a good way to conserve CPU and kind of retain the realism of the mix because you're really only gonna have one or two reverb units inside of your live drum setup that you can send certain drum microphones to. Next up, we've got panning, really straightforward. We've got some of the peak level meters, again, really useful. We've got the volume slider, pretty straightforward. Another thing is Control-Z does work when you're moving anything inside of Superior Drummer 3, and I love that that happened. Some plugins don't do it, and it's just frustrating, especially when you make a mistake. Next up, we've got the output, and this is actually where things can get a little bit confusing because right now I've got my kicks sent to the kick bus. So I have my two kicks here and there, there aren't any effects here. I do did put that EQ on there for demonstration purposes, but let's say I wanted to compress my two kicks, the kick sub and the kick out together, I would do that in the kick bus. So I send both of these to the kick bus and then I turn send that kick bus to the output. And that's really a great way to make your mix more cohesive. And then obviously you can rename anything just by double clicking, you'll be able to highlight them and then rename whatever you want. And as I said over here and before on the right side of the panel we have the ability to adjust any of the bleed amounts there's also the close mic audio from instruments and this is kind of like a volume knob but it affects the audio a little bit differently than using the volume fader here in the mixer itself time offset if we want to move any of the drums back in time so here it's at zero it's exactly where it should be but if we want to kind of add a little bit of a groove to it we can go up to negative 10 milliseconds so it's going to start negative 10 milliseconds before it usually would and then we have the envelope envelope release time which we can go super short or super extended and that has something to do with like what we talked about before in the drums panel with the envelope the same kind of thing but we have it just here in the mixer settings so we don't have to bounce back to the drums panel and then select that particular drum to adjust it there we can also do that for the whole drum kit at the same time if we just highlight multiple samples right here or multiple channels. Now we can adjust everything for those channels that we've selected. If we want to select any one of the bleeds for any one of the instruments, again, we just gotta click it and it's gonna update right here, Rack Tom, or we can use this drop down menu as well. So anyway, that's a really brief overview of the mixer panel and there's a lot more, more advanced stuff to know about, but if you're just getting in and getting started with some standard stereo drum sessions, you should be good to go. And in future videos, we'll dive more in depth into the those more extensive and advanced settings inside of the mixer panel.